All right, so one of the first things I need to go over about the camper build is some of the materials um, that I'm using to build it with. Primarily, I'm using this stuff right here, which is uh, extruded aluminum or T-slotted aluminum or 80-20, depending on what you want to call it. I buy it all through a company on the internet with the website 8020.net. So most people just refer to it as 8020. Uh, so we'll just call it 8020 to make things simple. But I use this stuff all the time for, or for projects all over the place. And uh, this stuff works great depending on uh, the application that you're using it for. So I'm not gonna get into too much depth on the 8020. I just recommend going to the website 8020.net, kind of explore and see all the options that they have available. I'm just gonna kind of go over a couple of things that I use or that I've been using on the camper so you can kind of get an idea of uh, what it's all about. So I already showed you here is there's a, some 90s. Um, they have a bunch of uh, plates, all sorts of sizes and shapes that you can get a hold of. Um, and then, you know, all sorts of different types of brackets. And then uh, uh, some of the connectors. So basically uh, you get these little T-nuts and they just slide right here, slide right into the slots and then you just bolt right into them. And then there's another uh, type of method where you can, uh, that, that I was trying out, but you can, uh, so you have like this, these two things that are a butt joint here. And what it is is just these little brackets here that you can slide in and tighten them up. And then you have some machined holes that, that they'll fits into. And they also have it so you can uh, do a 90 as well. And that kind of uh, the issue that I was having where it slides out, that's, that'll prevent that. But it does take a lot of material out of there. And so uh, I'm not sure if that has any impact on it or not. But that's kind of another option that I was looking at before and before I kind of went with the, the, the post that I have right now. So 8020 comes in a whole bunch of different sizes, metric and imperial. Uh, all my projects at home are one by two. So for example, on my CNC machine here, it's all like one by two based. And so I use this for a ton of different projects. So it's just nice to stay consistent. So that's one of the reasons why I went with the one by two because it, it matches all my other projects. So if I have some pieces left over or if I don't, if I need a pillage from another project to, to build a camper, I can do that. So I don't have to like order more. But some of the sizes I'm using is uh, the, the two by two, um, all inches, two by two inches, the one by one inch, and then uh, the two by one inch. And then I got a quarter round, and then I have some, uh, I think that's a half inch by one inch by half inch, I think. So, uh, Primarily comes in black and then silver. When I first started playing around with 8020, I'd always buy silver because it was cheaper, but now I always buy uh, the black anodized. And uh, I always get the holes tapped, so, because uh, I'm tired of tapping holes, so I always have them do it because they have the machining service as well. And then that goes for these two. You pretty much have to have them machine that unless you have a, a CNC machine or some type of mill to mill these holes out. Uh, so for the plates, I really don't use the 8020 plates. Uh, I've been making my own plates and uh, that I'll be showing you that process. I think these holes are a little bit bigger than the holes that, uh, that, uh, that I use. I think mine are a little bit smaller to give a little bit of a tighter tolerance on everything. So take out some of that slop. So, uh, oh, a couple other things too is uh, when you order it, um, be sure to look for the, the, the silver because you can have the black as well on the ends. And so the silver side, if you see, it's a lot cheaper because otherwise they have to anodize the whole thing for you. So it's kind of, kind of a custom thing. And then uh, there's two different types. Uh, there's uh, one with a whole bunch of lines on it, and then there's some uh, stuff uh, smooth, so it's like a really smooth surface. I really like the smooth, but it's it's uh, the the holes have like a little uh, X in it, so I prefer to have a little bit more meat on the on the tapped holes here. So uh, I don't have a I don't have to 
show you that here in a second. But so you can see here on all the on the smooth stock that they have, they have this little X on the hole, so it's not a complete or not a perfectly round hole. And so I'm really relying on this hole for uh, structural integrity with my posts and everything like that. So this I think might hold a little bit better. And uh, I need to do some research on why they why they do that. But all the smooth for the the one inch uh, AB20, it's, it, they're like that. So I can't really use, well I can use it, but I don't want to use the, the the smooth. So I'm kind of stuck with the, the one with the lines on it. And that's fine, so it all works. So I just want to give a quick tour of my CNC machine here. It's, it kind of gives you an idea why I like to use the AB20. Um, this is like multiple projects that, that I've got going that I kind of pillage as I need them. So uh, like these posts right here are for my uh, light tent. I use these to connect uh, the 8020 to uh, a light pole and then I can make a little light tent with uh, these rails. These are actually the rails for the light tent. And then also some of these rails here are for my camera crane. And this is part of the platform of the camera crane. This is a uh, a piece for my desk that uh, I made a little monitor stand and I had a, I had a piece that was too long so I just go, went ahead and use it for the, the CNC machine here. And uh, you can see here are some of the brackets I have. These are the 8020 brackets, not my custom brackets. And so I got the, the 90 and a couple other things going on here. But uh, yeah, so this works great. Uh, and so I, I just kind of love working with the, the material AB20 because it's just so much you can do with it. For, for example, let's make a little CNC machine that works. Okay, so I had no intention at all to build this camper with the AB20, maybe the top rail, and that, that's about it. Uh, my thought process was to use this as a prototyping material. And that's because you can build the camper if you need to make a change, you can just unbolt everything, make the modifications, and then put it all back together. And I thought that, you know, maybe I'd be able to use it as a temporary solution until I can come up with a more permanent solution. And so one of my, my biggest concerns was, you know, is, is these posts right here. And I have kind of show you, for example, is, is there's not a lot of uh, force holding these together, depending on, on which way the force is going. And so, my main concern, this, I got this kind of loose, but that, uh, that it would slide off like that. And so, you know, having this slide off in the middle of a bumpy road would, would be catastrophic. So that was the, the one thing that I was trying to figure out, you know, how to, how, to fix that, how to fix that problem. One of the ideas I came up with is just kind of have a through bolt that just goes all the way through the bracket uh, to the other side. And then that way, there's no way that it'll come apart. But instead, I kind of went with a different solution for now. And that's kind of how I have everything set up. And I, I think this might work actually for a permanent solution. So I got this, it's a flat bar, a quarter inch, and I have uh, countersunk holes in here, and then a, and a bolt that will sit flush. And the, the idea was that on the 8020, there are two, uh, for one by two, there's, there's two holes there that you can uh, tap out of with a quarter inch for a quarter inch bolt. And so you end up with something like this, where you have these two bolts flush, and they're not gonna come undone because there's gonna be something on, on the bottom. So that's an extra safety feature. And uh, if you don't, countersink the holes too much. If you countersink the holes too much and it does get loose, you kind of you end up with a spinner, but still though, it still has a lot of holding power. But anyways, like all these brackets that I got going now are kind of based on this design where I have a quarter inch uh, plate of some sort, and then I'm using the, the holes on the, the 8020 to attach everything to. So I, I still might uh, do this in combination with some brackets and I you know, still may do the drill a hole through. But this uh, seems really solid. So I have, you know, I'll go over these posts later and, and how I make them and everything like that. And, and you can kind of see how they're designed and their holding power.
So uh, one of the other reasons I was going to use this as a prototyping material, I forgot to mention, is I was going to build the exterior with uh, 8020 as a prototyping temporary thing. But then with all the 8020, I was going to take it apart and use it to build the interior. So, um, and that would have been a permanent solution. So I was going to use all my exterior for the interior. I'm still going to use 8020 for the interior, but but now I think I might just kind of keep the 8020 here. I knew he was going to start barking. He always does that. Are you done? So here's the top rail of my camper, and I'm using uh, one inch by two inch uh, 8020. And so I did notice that other people building wedge campers and pop-up campers are using uh, the uh, inch and a half by three inch or inch and a half by four and a half inch for their rail. So I thought about using that uh, for this, but it's just it's getting pretty heavy. And so I was trying to keep the camper as light as I could, especially up high. So uh, my thought was, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use the one by two and see how it goes. And if it doesn't work, then um, I'll switch to something bigger. I'm not, it's going to be more than just the one by two because I'm going to have a, a second uh, rail that goes on top. So basically I have one inch by four inch. So here's my plates that I was kind of talking about earlier. I have the countersunk here for where the window goes. And then you can see I have everything bolted to my top rail here. And there's a couple other types of uh, brackets that I'm using. So I did add a, a huge bracket up here and I'm going to add a gusset along here to kind of help support the over cab part because that's the only part that's really flexing. And uh, if, if with all that, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that I can just stick with the one by two for uh, the final solution. So that's everything I wanted to cover for this video. Um, for the next one, I plan to do a complete walk around of the camper just to kind of show you where I'm at. Uh, I've made a lot of progress. I'm a little bit behind on the build videos, but uh, I thought it'd be nice to go ahead and show you everything that I've completed. And then uh, the following videos will be uh, the build videos and how I got to this point. So anyways, uh, keep, uh, keep an eye out for that one. And in the meantime, uh, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. All right, see you on the next one.